Hi, and welcome to the Design Systems Podcast. This podcast is about the place where design and development overlap. We talk with experts to get their point of view about trends in design, code, and how it relates to the world around us. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Knapsack. Check us out at knapsack.cloud. If you want to get in touch with the show, ask some questions, or generally tell us what you think, go ahead and tweet us at the DSPod. We'd love to hear from you. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Today, I'm talking with Demian Borba. He's the product manager for Adobe XD. There's a little bit to unpack there, Demian. Welcome to the program. Tell us a little bit about what you do with Adobe and specifically the XD product. Sure. Uh, So as you said, I'm a product manager on the XD team. We have a lot of PMs on on, on the project. Uh, We have PMs in the US. We have PMs in Romania and also India with teams, with development teams and designers also in these different locations. Uh, So my role now really focuses on everything developer. So XD, as you know, is this platform where designers can design, create prototypes, and then share the experiences to get feedback. And there's a lot of opportunities to work with uh, developers there. So that's, that's what I do. I focus everything developer on the XD platform. Gotcha. And you've been working on the project for what, like about five years, you said? Yes. XD started in 2014 with uh, four guys. It's one of those, I think, few projects that started really inside Adobe and grew a lot. So if you count all the names involved in the XD project today, it's close to 500 people all over the world. So there's a lot of Good minds behind the, the the platform. Gotcha. And your your primary focus is on the developer side of things, the developer tools and, and tool integration, as well as this big project that you're working on that's related to design tokens. Yes. So for almost seven months now, I'm heads down on this new hypothesis that we're trying to to test with going to Visual Studio Code to help developers be more involved in in the design system discipline by giving them the power to very quickly uh, be able to create tokens, compile tokens, and and even define some components with code snippets and, and all that. I can spend hours talking about this this little project. That's my, my biggest focus for now. So the integration is between XD and VS Code. Talk to me a little bit about this. And full disclosure, we're actually working with you guys on on some of this stuff. So I'm excited to to chat more about this uh, here in a minute. But but just so that our audience can kind of understand what this is all about, um, you know, what actually is the the connection point between XD and VS Code? Yeah. So uh, as a product manager, I think the biggest role that I I, I always try to play is understanding the the problem, fa- falling in love with the problem, and really going deep in like where there is a big problem to be solved. And also like if there's a business opportunity that we can align there and that there's a lot of connections there. So when I started this research, let's call it last year, we, we are fully aware that, there, there's a, that there's a ton of amazing tools out there like Knapsack, like Storybook, like Zeppelin, like Zero Height that play a lot to help developers test components and, and, and create tokens and all that. But they are really trying to make that process as easy as possible within their own platforms. And then when we look at developers, pretty much every developer uses an IDE or a code editor. So when when we started looking at areas to focus, we, we very quickly identified that Visual Studio Code is this super fast growing platform created by Microsoft. In five years, they're close to 10 million MAU, like monthly active users which is insane. It is used by, by half of all developers on the planet, more than half of all developers in the planet. And it just made sense like, okay, there's so many good tools like Knapsack solving that, let's say organization visual process. What can we do as Adobe to bring developers to the design system scenario, but now instead of creating something separate, Let's try to go to where they are. And that was uh, our, our, our initial plan was to go to Visual Studio Code. And we're building this extension to really create this connection in between designers uh, and developers in VS Code. It's no exaggeration to say that, that VS Code has become the dominant platform for developers. And I think it's awesome that Adobe is looking at how do you create an ecosystem that is is greater than the sum of its parts. Uh, a big part of kind of Knapsack's idea here is 
we want to be a lot of the the connection between all these different applications. And it's great to see Adobe um, opening itself up to to integrations like this that allow it to be kind of more than than just XD. Yeah, and and also like another big part there is that one of the the, the key goals that we have there is like how can we help tools like Knapsack and Zeppelin and Zero Height to also be more where developers are. So that's, I think, the biggest reason that we are working together is that if you support the structure that we're proposing using the, the work that we're doing, you can really get closer to developers in VS Code. So we're going to have code completion and, and all these different like uh, co compiling tokens and everything in VS Code, something that we also look at partners as customers, right? Not only the developer, but also you guys can can benefit by by being there in VS Code. It's just opening the doors for more people to to be in VS Code, developers and partners. So you can go and play with this right now. It's it's available, it's releasable. We'll make sure we put a link to it in the show notes. So, but in case people are interested in trying it, like what specifically does it do? Like what's the intent behind the integration? Yeah, so there's, there's a scenario where anyone that's interested in design tokens and you can spend hours talking about tokens, but everyone interested in tokens there are scenarios where people are not using tokens and then everything's hard coded, like all the values are hard coded. There's also a scenario where uh, teams are using tokens, but all of that process is very manual. You have to create all the JSON files. You have to create all the different rules, the config files for your build system, style dictionary, Theo, all the different build systems. And then we thought about simplifying even that, that build system scenario. So what we did is we created this extension for VS Code that has a very rich UI that helps you create all that infrastructure of tokens and build systems and all that in a more visual way. So you can really do that much, much faster than than writing everything by hand in, in text files and JSON files or YAML yeah. files. So I've got to touch it a couple of times already as we've been kind of working with you guys through the development process. And I got to say, I, I love most of all about the fact that it is it is really inside of your development environment. So you don't have to go out to some separate application. You don't really have to do a whole lot of work to get things connected. It literally is taking a bunch of data and information from XD and presenting it right alongside the code that you're working on. And I think that's a really smart and savvy way of thinking about it. And, and also like two, two things that we're trying to, again, everything is a hypothesis, right? We're, we're putting it out there for people to to test and, and, and play with and, and we can always iterate. And the, the customer advisory board that we have that you guys are a huge part is really helping us. And we saw that when it comes down to creating tokens and all that, a lot of people, they can write the tax files themselves. They can use Google Sheets. I've heard people managing tokens in Google Sheets. Or you have to really connect to an API. You have to understand how an API works and you have to understand about like authentication and all those challenges that pretty much it's not everyone that 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 knows that 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 world. You have to be fully invested in in design systems. What we're offering with this extension is that anyone that has some sort of design, let's say in XD, can pull that into VS Code with one click, and you can get your whole token set created. And with another click, you can compile them to Flutter, iOS, uh, Android, everything that's there. Uh, initially with a VS style dictionary. And again, trying to simplify everything that involves tokens. I also really like your guys' kind of take on tokens. And this is something I'd really like to riff on for a little bit here is, you know, we have tokens now, right? And tokens now are this construction of basic bits of a design system, your basic patterns, right? And there's a lot of debate about, you know, are these atoms in the atomic model? Are they patterns that are independent of components? Is it this meta layer that's on top of your actual components? Or are they the things that your components are constructed from? And answering these questions is something that's a little bit challenging right now because the current state of, of design tokens largely revolves around relatively simple things like spacing and colors and, and typography. But there's a lot more to tokens than that. And I kind of want to get a sense from you of, of where this is all headed, right? You've spent more time than pretty much anybody I know um, really thinking about design tokens for the past year. Um, I mean, you live this stuff every day. And so kind of give me a, your take on, on the landscape as it is now and where it might be headed. I think tokens really 
are there mainly to help developers, right? As I have a big developer background, I graduated in computer science. I was a developer advocate for BlackBerry, PayPal in the past. So I can tell like developers hate to repeat stuff, right? They're always trying to find ways of automating a process or if you have the same like piece of code or, or, or data repeated in code, it, it hurts, you know, it, it's, it's bad. So I think that's, that's where everything started. So developers didn't like the idea of hard-coded values there in, in code because, again, if you have multiple platforms and multiple repos that you have to manage, then it becomes very hard to, to go through changes. And, and especially today when we, when we build uh, digital products and projects, it's really, it's really iterative, right? It changes all the time. So going through that change on the developer side of things was, was painful. So I used to recall back in, in sort of the agency days of my career, when you'd introduce like a new typography into a system, right? So the design team is going to go away for a week and update all the designs. And then the development team is going to go away for three weeks to try to update every single variable in the system, try to find, chase down all those inline styles, those little fragments that exist in, in some random product somewhere, and then probably like not be totally sure that they got it right. Yeah, no, I, I think I think the, the biggest message that, that I'm trying to convey here is that it's very easy to to get lost in tokens and all this automation and all that. But it's important to remind everyone that it's just a tool to get to a more efficient scenario, like in where you don't have to to change hard coded values and all that. So keeping that in mind. Anything that we can do to make that process faster, I think it only helps. Again, it's very easy to get lost in the weeds of all the different build tools and Node and, 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 and all that. And then it becomes, and it's, it's crazy. Uh, I remember back in the Flash days when it was ActionScript 2 and then 3, it was easy, right? Now, uh, if you look at any JavaScript framework, just to, to have like a hello world, working you have to go through a process you have to know like how to use the mm -hmm. terminal i have to to build i have to have node and it's just so much more complicated so by trying to solve this repetitive processes now because of the reality the state of the art and all that it just it is a lot more complicated there's a lot more steps so in and, and also like it looks very fragile like it's whenever you have your your build system and all that no matter how good you are like it it can it can break right it can it can have problems because it's like a lot of wires that are on top of each other you know trying to to do something definitely the the plane built out of duct tape and bailing <laughs> wire um now e even the best systems i've seen are definitely um you know at a level of complexity that is really hard to to fully understand and I think that that's one of the interesting things about kind of the modern web, right, is it's all built upon these systems that are highly complex, that are are almost unknowable by one single individual. And so trying to, to make sense of that complexity is a big part of, I think, what we're trying to do with design systems, um, at least as it relates to the front end. No, yeah, totally. And, and, and for example, Adobe, right, we have our Spectrum design system. It, it supports web and it has implementations on React, on CSS. We also have uh, implementations for native like uh, iOS and Android. And I was, as part of my research, and I'm, I work with them a lot to, to really validate this work that we're doing to, to test with them. We have the people from the Spectrum team in our, in our customer advisory board. And I was looking at the DNA. It's, it's, it's a, a big JSON file that has all the tokens in Spectrum. Guess how many lines, how many tokens are there? Oh, gosh. I mean, I would guess at least 100. 11,000. Oh, my gosh. Lines. Okay, so that is, that is way bigger <laughs> than I thought it was going to be. If you, ha if you count all the... All the I'm, I'm talking about the lines on the JSON file. If you talk about all the aliases and all the variations and right, yeah, it's eleven thousand lines. Yeah, because it's a lot more than just your your like your core palette and your core typography. You guys are actually describing the use of those things semantically yeah. as a part of your tokens. Yeah, it's 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 crazy. It can get very complex, but again, it's working for us. So now my goal, our goal with this work, and that's why it's so important to work with partners. It's amazing to to collaborate with with partners like you guys, Knapsack. We also have people from other tools, Zeppelin, Zero Height, and a lot of companies that use tokens, uh, Amazon and, and, and uh, Target, Google. And it's, it's amazing to, to expose all these, these ideas there and, 
and just see what happens, right? As a PM, I'm always trying to to fail as fast as possible. And it's fascinating how scary and fun and exciting that the whole process is. And yeah, today, like now that we have this working and live, it's just it's just crazy to see like in the very beginning, it was just a little hypothesis that we're validating and you guys helped us uh, shape it. Yeah, it's been an honor to be a part of it, honestly. And I, um, I'm excited about the announcement. I'm excited about what we've been able to accomplish. And I think it's going to be a, a really great tool to, to bring that collaboration into the fold. Um, you know, one of the things that, that I have been kind of thinking about is, is before the show, we were, we were talking for a little bit and you were, you know, I, I was talking about how it's likely that, that Salesforce and Amazon and, you know, the people that wrote Theo and Style Dictionary really probably didn't even know the the scope and spectrum of what they'd created at the time. And you had basically said, you know, I think that if you were to ask the people that that made those software tools what a design token is, you would probably get like a little bit different of an answer. I, I want to hear from your opinion, like, you know, if, if I'm if I'm someone listening to this show and I'm thinking about how design tokens impact my business, like how would you describe that to that person? Yeah, I think I think tokens, based on all the learning, especially from our customer advisory board and seeing how people tackle it, uh, seeing how the, for example, I spoke with the 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 guys behind the working group for the W3C, they're trying to create the spec for for tokens. It's it's the the most basic, let's say, key and value of any system, right? And combined with others via collections, via mixings, I don't know how you call it, you can then start creating more intent and, 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 and solve bigger problems. But then the cool thing is it's, it's always starting from that atom, as, as you mentioned. And then if you change that, or if you change a collection, if you change a set, a theme, everything can be changed. It's almost like a database of the most basic elements of any design system. Yeah, and I've always kind of seen two different, I guess, main points of view around design tokens. There's the idea that everything that you create in your system should be able to be broken down into a design token. And so from the the most complex organisms and pages, you should be able to break those down into thousands or tens of thousands of, of individual little pieces. And then there's kind of this other school of thought that there's your your component code, your you know buttons and cards and heroes that then have this meta layer on top of them that is the application of these kind of universal constants that are design tokens. So, you know, a card is a card is a card, but with a different set of design tokens applied, that card can can look and, and even behave very differently. And I'm kind of curious, like, you know, which model do you ascribe to? Do you think that that a button is just a construction of a grid and a fill and a, a typography and a color and a state? Or do you think about a button as a distinct thing that then has a token set applied to it? Yeah, I think it varies, right? It's it's hard to to be in one side or the other. I think you have the, the let's call it the global tokens, tokens that are more agnostic. And that's what we're trying to really help people do with the extension. And then you start to creating aliases that can create a little bit more intent, like a like a primary color or, or a background color. And then on top of that, you have component specific tokens, right? And those tokens are more related to the component itself. So I think it's really a, a kind of a connection in between this this most basic value that can be extended to to variations and to overrides and to really solve your problem. But I don't think there's one clear way. And also like every team has different levels of, of complexity, right? So if you look at Adobe Spectrum, they have a team of 20 people, like fully dedicated to it. Material design, same thing. But then if you look at the, the agency or a smaller shop, they are also interested in optimizing their development process, maybe a startup and tokens can help there. But and, and some components are, are fully finished and they have implementations in different platforms, but others are more like as an experiment. And it, it's very hard. Like I think the best token system is the token system that works for your reality. And you think about, you know, lots of people think about tokens as, as Chrome or tokens as a brand or tokens as an expression of a sub-brand in the system. I think that you know, one of the really hard parts about it is there's so much flexibility and so much capability within tokens. And especially once you start to, to group them and you create these like kind of compound variable sets, right? Yeah. And, and also like by, by the natural evolution of what people do in tokens, 
it's initially there for developers, right? To really power and, and create all the components and change the props and all that. But then because they are agnostic, design tools can also start using tokens to then create a more uh, aligned system, right? So tokens can also work as this connection in between uh, your design and your development. It's again, back to the database or API or whatever you call it, it can be consumed by both developers and designers. And that's the whole beauty of, of tokens. Right. And it can do that during the creation process. So whether that's in a, a design application or in a, a code based application, as well as the consumption. And so, you know, one of the wonderful things about components is they tend to be innately cross platform. Um, you know, tokens that work for for native OSs tend to work for the web, which tend to work for Angular or React or PHP or whatever particular flavor of template language is your choice. So that kind of inherent cross-platform capability is really powerful. And it it helps us kind of understand how, how you can take a lot of the decisions that you're making and push them into this democratized way across all the different inputs and outputs of, of your pattern system. I, I really like the, the the point that you made about like it's a working thing, right? It's 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 a product. And the 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 really important thing that I learned over the, the the whole research and all the collaboration with you guys in our customer advisory board is that developers and designers, they have to be both part of this creation process, right? So that that's why it's so important to do it in a way that that's agnostic. You can track using whatever system you want. It could be Git or anything to track your versions and all that. And that's that's really important. And at the same time, there's a bigger opportunity on, yes, there's a lot of amazing documentation sites for pretty much every every design system out there. But do we know if every dev, every new developer will really read everything or they're going to start copying and, and pasting things, right? So another thing they're trying to to help teams with the extension is how we can we can create a a, a package that's almost like a subset of the bigger system that's agnostic enough almost like a combination of quick start guides you know like if you if you buy a new product you have the full manual or you have that quick start two page thing so that's i think you can see vs code as a collection the extension as a collection of those of those things and we're we're doing that by proposing of course working with everyone in our advisory board uh, as a new package that it it was just a natural process during this this whole project. It was fascinating and, and, and amazing to to go through that process, come up with this new package format, and then iterate on it uh, based on all the feedback from you guys. Right. No, and I know this is another big part of the announcement beyond just the the VS Code integration. Actually, having the design systems package as the format standard that you guys are are proposing to handle a lot of these interoperability challenges and um you know being able to advise on that and kind of see it it change and grow it's a really interesting idea of of how do we create some sort of well defined way to structure the data that needs to flow between all these different applications and so no matter where your data is going or no matter where it's coming from having a, a common structure for that data kind of helps solve a lot of these interoperability challenges that you face getting stuff from design to code and back again yeah, I think this is the biggest goal with the W3C working group for design tokens. They are trying to recommend a spec that will also help tools, I think, have tokens in a, in a more organized, more standard way. So it's, it's, it's good validation, right, that, that they're tackling that because we started this uh, hypothesis of DSP for design system package months ago. And again, our goal there is to learn as much as possible help teams and tools share information among themselves. And, and it's it's really a learning exercise, right? So I think my goal as a PM and Adobe and everyone involved here is, is to have this initial MVP for this design system package that's super agnostic based on JSON and then work with tools like you guys that export DSP, you know, to to really start testing the waters. There's a plugin in XD that consumes DSP. So now designers can also uh, consume uh, design system package information. And then as we learn more, we can inform other teams. We can inform the, the W3C working group to help their, their efforts. This is a very open 
uh, approach that we're taking to to really try to solve this problem and 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 learn and share all that learning with everyone that's interested. Yeah, and I, I do really appreciate you inviting us to be a, a member of that advisory board and you know looking at the folks that are are there alongside us. It's a good ecosystem representation. You have companies large and small, you have ecosystem partners, and you have the people that help create a lot of the popular design token platforms, uh, systems, I guess, that we have right now. And so I, I do definitely appreciate the openness of this and also the fact that it will become an open format that is is something that isn't owned or controlled by Adobe, but is really there to help facilitate uh, a better way of sharing information back and forth. Yeah, if you look at PDF, like years ago, right, it was this proposal, it's open, anyone can write PDF. It's similar, it's it's a very open folder structure that anyone can write to and tools that support the the, the, the DSP package will be able to share information across across their, their, their systems and, and all that. So again, trying to help the industry try to learn and, and, and inform everyone who's trying to solve the same problem. The benefit that I think that we have is that we can... We can try more, we can go faster and, and fail more. And our cab is really, really helping us, like big companies, uh, Google, Target, Amazon, and, and also, like as you said, smaller ones, like smaller agencies and, and people trying to look at this challenge. And also people uh, working on tools like Zeppelin, Zero Hide, Knapsack. It's a very humbling experience. I'm, every time I, I speak with you guys, it's like, okay, let's 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 put this to the test and because we're always in love with the the challenge, whenever we hear something that oh this doesn't work or this is bad, it's it, it never hurts because we're 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 there to learn and to to share our, our learnings with everyone there. So it's a it's a very collaborative effort and it's amazing. I'm I'm very grateful for for all the work that you guys are 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 doing there. Yeah, and we've been really excited to be a part of it. I think one of the things that's been the most interesting part about that is. Everybody kind of has this same unifying goal, or at least in my mind they do, where people want to be able to edit and use and kind of remix tokens in whatever place they work in. So designers want to be able to do that inside of of XD or, or some other design tool. Developers want to be able to do that in VS Code or some other IDE. And then there are, are folks that want to be able to do that in, in the systems that manage documentations and pattern libraries like Knapsack. And so the ability to basically say, I can take this format and use it in any one of these different applications and have the ability to to read it, change it, and edit it. That's really where kind of the, the beauty and the power of this comes in is, is no one person wants to control where design tokens live. And also like it's a common language, right? It's something that's super agnostic, not opinionated about anything. It's keys and values about tokens for colors, size, all these different uh, kinds of tokens. Also typography, which is in, in, in our read, it's the it's a collection of different tokens with aliases and all that. And also in DSP, another big area there is components, right? So you can define your components. So you can add all the documentation about all the components that that is relevant to a developer that can be um, consumed in VS Code contextually using code snippets. And uh, again, it, it's it's just trying to help teams, developers in this case, get close to the right information contextually. So as they code and they are in VS Code, for example, they don't have to break their flow to go to a documentation site, search for that thing. They can do all that contextually in VS Code. And again, thanks to DSP, that's really powering the the, the, the whole foundation for that. Yeah, I almost think about like DSP, like like sheet music and notes, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter what instrument you're playing, yeah. but you know, you get a bunch of these different instruments together and then all of a sudden you have a band and you have a, a, a track and an album and all this other stuff. And so it all just kind of builds from this idea of, of how do we all agree on what we're, we're playing together? No, that's a great analogy. Yeah, that's, that's so true. And again, every time I, we make progress on this, it gets more exciting, it gets more scary. Like now that we validated this with you guys and all the partners there. They showed interest. They're, 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 they're interested in, in playing with this. I think the next step is now let's work with other design tools and see if they are interested in also like supporting this so we can have a common like industry approach. And again, it's scary and exciting at the same time. Yeah, it's always challenging with standards, right? Like you're always reminded of that one XKCD comic by Randall Monroe talking about 
you know, hey, all this is broken. We need to do standard 17 standards later, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but I I really do think you guys are going about it the right way, making sure that it's involving uh, people, you know, certainly outside of your four walls and, and even people that you would say would compete with you in some ways. And so I think that's really a, a smart approach and also involving the, the W3C working group. I, I really want to see this be successful. And I'm, I'm very excited about our investment in it and, and what we're all trying to build here together. No, yeah, this is super exciting. Uh, again, thanks for being there, for helping us. One example is that when we were uh, testing the component side of things in DSP, you guys gave us good feedback because initially we thought, okay, we could have one language type per, per snippet, for example, but then you guys, no, 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 but we need also using the same language type, let's say it's JavaScript, we need to have one snippet for Angular, another snippet for Vue, another snippet, all the different variations. So based on that awesome feedback, we went back, we did a lot of uh, changes and then it's now live. So you guys are really influencing how DSP is evolving. And, and again, it only helped to, to, to make it a better uh, spec. No, and you guys are still welcoming feedback and contributions to the standard. Oh, yeah. And so, you know, uh, maybe tell people how they can get involved. Um, you know, you can check it out by by looking in the show notes. But um, beyond that, if you've got feedback or things you're interested in sharing, uh, how do they go about doing that? Yeah, you can you can learn more about DSP by going to our, our GitHub. Just, just search for uh, Design System Package. I'll, I'll share the link with you guys and you can add. And if you're interested in playing with the extension, the, the Visual Studio Code extension, you can go to VS Code, the marketplace, search for Adobe XD. The name of the extension is Adobe XD. And then there you can, again, create your tokens from scratch. You can create our components from scratch. Or you can bring data from, from Knapsack, for example. Or you can use CC libraries, Creative Cloud libraries, to create packages in a, in a much faster way if you want. So you don't have to uh, do everything one by one. And in the extension itself, there's a lot of links. And one of the links is uh, about the, the about DSP. So you can get to DSP docs using the extension as well. And we are always on Twitter. Anytime you use hashtag Adobe XD, the entire XD team sees it. It's it's a very open and, and, and collaborative approach. So any feedback that you have, you can find me on Twitter. You can use hashtag Adobe XD or just file something there on, on GitHub for us to, to look at. Well, that's great. I'm excited to see where all this goes. So, so changing gears a little bit, you're also a surfer. Um, you live in yeah. San Diego. You spend a lot of time in the waves. You know, tell me a little bit about how that plays into your life and how you think that you know, surfing relates to design tokens. Uh, it's a great point. Like, yeah, I, I, I surf since I was like very, very young. I love it. My, my dream as a, as a teenager was to be like a, a pro surfer and all that. I didn't get to, to, to get to the, to the major leagues as a professional surfer, but I was able to do a lot of work for the World Surf League as, as a developer in the past. So that was, again, super interesting. And I think now that uh, there's so, so many different equipment and, 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 and you can try different boards, different fins, different uh, even wax, there's 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 that aspect. Okay, if I if I change this fin to this new spec to this new set, you can see the difference. You can do better. So I think it's the same the same comp, uh, concept. It's a lot of modules that you can add to your to your to your system to to do better or do worse and test. So I think that's that's the similarity. On the more spiritual side of things, surfing is really there for me to disconnect. And, and, and really wash my, my soul, you know, like and, 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 and re-energize. I love it. I love competing. But I think the biggest thing for me is being in the water, close to nature, disconnected from any social media. I recently, <laughs> I also deleted a lot of my, my profiles. Not deleted, I deleted the, the apps from my phone uh, just to, to be more like focusing on, on my kids and, and, and on the important things. It's interesting. My my wife recently took Facebook off her phone and, um, you know, we, we have a newborn at home. So it was all about the idea of like, let's try to be more present with this this new life that's entered uh, entered our world. And uh, it's kind of interesting, the, uh, you know, the effect it has on you mentally and, and what you think about and what you spend time talking about. Yeah. And it all happens so fast, so fast. Like you don't want to miss those things. And it's very easy to get distracted by, not distracted only, but also like influenced negatively by 
by others like op opinions and if you have like there's there's always haters out there so it's like yeah I, I don't need this for now so I, I i deleted instagram facebook and linkedin from my phone i'm a lot more relaxed i'm a lot more focused on work a lot more focused on my family relaxing for me in the past me meant okay i need to take my phone and and just look at things and now relaxing is like okay i, I go downstairs after a, a full day of work and i take my kids to like let's do some skateboarding you know and it's 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 different. It's it's different. Yeah, I mean, you and I definitely share that that similar love of nature, and I think that it's interesting that once you start to think about the world and patterns, you kind of see them everywhere. Um, I've been actually like doing a kitchen remodel recently, and <laughs> nice. it was all about the the reusable <laughs> patterns in my kitchen. Is <laughs> you know, I was sitting there with the, this uh, poor poor contractor that we hired, basically talking about how like it's all about patterns, man. And he's like, I'm just. <laughs> laying a floor dude <laughs> <laughs> it's so foreign yeah it's so foreign like what what yeah it's 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 very interesting yeah and another thing that that we're trying to do here at home is try and keep things more like minimal and like uh close to minimalism and it's also like super f like f if it frees you up for like so much more for sure uh it's funny i i used to be like pretty deeply into it and i've i've kind of pulled back a lot. Uh, again, I haven't deleted anything either, but I also haven't contributed to it other than, um, you know, a lot of work stuff. You know, the, the whole notion of doom scrolling is something that is, <laughs> is terrifying in our reality now, right? Like the idea of like, I'm going to go watch the, uh, the world collapse in real time. Like, um, that's probably not a healthy human activity. No. And, 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 and tracking all that, I tell my wife this all the time, that infinite scrolling takes so so much brain power like you have to read 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 and it will get you tired like pretty quickly right and what's in it for you like you could be with your kids it could be surfing it could be like just if you look at your brain as a muscle like you're stressing it for no reason you're just creating distractions it's almost like eating junk food non-stop for for your brain no for sure I, I would much rather be uh, surfing next to you on a wave, even though I'm an absolutely rubbish <laughs> surfer, than uh, uh, sitting here doom scrolling Twitter. But um, yeah, let's make it happen. Sounds good, man. Well, hey, anyway, I just want to say I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with us about tokens, about uh, the advisory board, about uh, the DSP, about your VS Code extension. There is just a lot going on in your life. And I wish you all the best as this... Uh, matures and takes root you know we're gonna we're gonna definitely continue to be a part of it um and look forward to seeing where it goes awesome thanks a lot chris thanks for the space here amazing work on the podcast great work on knapsack and yeah let's let's collaborate that's all for today this has been another episode of the design systems podcast thanks for listening if you have any questions or a topic you'd like to know more about find us on twitter at the ds pod we'd love to hear from you with show ideas recommendations questions or comments as always, this pod is brought to you by Knapsack. You can check us out at knapsack.cloud. Have a great day.